in order to close the budget gap without any without additional revenues, uh, I will be forced to make significant cuts in both the city and schools, uh, including the elimination of uh, 22 full-time equivalent positions. Uh, we'll be making uh, particularly, those cuts will be across general government, across public safety, across the schools. Um, I'm particularly concerned about the schools because some of the cuts we're making there are uh, unprecedented um, and I believe could be irreparable. Uh, elimination of you know, busing to the high school, elimination of arts and theater, uh, elimination of music programs, technology programs, uh, and, and larger class sizes in, in some of our schools uh, because of the fact that we're making these cuts. Um, so with that in mind, I really, I, I, I believe that it's my obligation and my duty uh, to put forward sort of the final option that we have for uh, generating local revenue. Uh, so I wanted to inform the City Council tonight uh, that at your next meeting, uh, and I will be filing an order next week, I will be submitting to you a, uh, an order calling for a June 25th, 2013 special municipal election uh, for the purpose of a Proposition 2 and a half override ballot question. Uh, I, we will be working over the next week to look at the numbers, particularly looking at that House number, and trying to uh, finalize what we believe about where the budget gap stands. Uh, and we will be um, trying to put together a plan to show how increased local revenues generated through a Proposition 2 and a half override uh, could be uh, structured uh, to provide us a sustainable path over the next three to five years uh, to be able to meet the needs of our city budget and the services and the schools and education that we need to provide. So I wanted to inform you of that tonight. I'm not obviously putting forward a formal proposal, uh, but I wanted to sort of put you on notice. And you know, my office has been inundated with calls and with emails about this question, about whether, uh, and, and frankly, people asking me to give them this option. Uh, to be able to vote on it. So it's obviously not a step I uh, thought I would be making when I uh, raised my right hand a year ago. Uh, it's not something I take lightly, uh, something I relish, uh, but I do believe it is my duty, uh, given the cuts uh, that we're facing, to pre present this option to the City Council and ultimately to the voters of Northampton. Uh, so that is my report, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, Obviously, I'll be providing more, more information for your next meeting, um, but, uh, but I wanted to make that public statement tonight uh, and uh, let the council know where I'm headed uh, in this particular issue. Councilor. Yes, Mayor. Um, you are saying at our next city council meeting, you will be bringing in a proposal for us city councilors for a proposition two and a half to place it on the ballot. That is and correct. that proposition two and a half will occur the month of June of this 2013. That is correct. There is a, um, as you all know, there is a special Senate election scheduled for Tuesday, June 25th uh, in, in the Commonwealth. So we are holding an election on that day. Uh, we're required to hold an election on that day. Uh, so this will be an order to um, hold a, a local municipal election, a special municipal election for the purpose of this one question that we'll put before the voters about raising additional revenues. So that is a special election. What is the cost for that? Well, the cost will be, uh, we will be, and this is the, the legislature uh, uh, did enact uh, special legislation uh, knowing that they were holding these two state elections, on a, one on April 30th and one on June 25th. They did hold, they did pass legislation allowing cities and towns to move local elections to one of those dates. So towns that were holding uh, their normal April municipal elections have been moving them to April 30th uh, to consolidate them, to not create confusion or dilution of, of the electorate uh, having elections a week apart. Um, so we would be moving it to the 25th. We would be responsible for the costs of printing the local ballot. Um, obviously, the state is printing the uh, the state ballot. We would have to print the local ballot, and we would obviously well, we, we are providing most of the manpower anyway for the state election. We don't really, as you've heard the city clerk describe, we don't really get reimbursed much for that. Um, it's very minimal. 
Uh, so we will be having to provide, uh, you know, the manpower, people power to carry out the election as well. Uh, so there's not a figure there, like ten thousand. Don't I can ask I can ask the city clerk, and I'm sure she can give me a figure. I know that um, well, a little bit different election, but when we held a when we did something comparable in the fall, uh, you may recall during the federal election, which is a much larger election, larger turnout, probably many more ballots being printed. Um, uh, we estimated that the costs were in the range of about twenty about twenty thousand dollars, possibly less, and we've actually. Uh, working with uh, Representative Cocott have filed special legislation, uh, well, <coughs> filing a budget order with other towns who were in the same situation we were last fall, uh, seeking reimbursement uh, from the state uh, for that particular election. Um, as you may recall, I, the Secretary of State and I had a, a difference of opinion about um, how well the deadlines <coughs> were communicated. Um, and so uh, we believe that that was one that the state should have allowed us to do. But in this case, actually, no towns are being allowed to, uh, are being allowed to piggyback onto the state ballot, but they are being allowed to hold a local election on the same day. Okay. So we're going to avail ourselves of that particular option. I but just, I just wanted that explained exactly. to the yeah. taxpayers of exactly. the reasons why it will not be held in November. And, well, and the other obvious reason for doing it in June is, is you know, I'm going to be presenting a budget to you on May 17th that will include the cuts that, that we've put forward that I have to make. And, uh, and, and then obviously, if depending on the decision of the voters in June, uh, there'll either be revenues that can be added back into the budget or not. Uh, so if we don't uh, have this question before the voters before July 1st, uh, then the cuts will go into effect. But you still could not do it in November because it's a state election. Uh, no, it's a municipal election in November. What I'm saying is that um, uh, you know, school starts on September 1st, and we will be laying off you know, 16 to 17 teachers uh, when school starts. And it will be very difficult at that point if we have an override in November uh, to, uh, to avert that. that, that so it's, it's really about our July 1st budget deadline. Um, Thank you. And as in past overrides, we've held them in June because of the uh, because of the budget cycle. Thank you. Yes, Councilor Specter. In terms of the process that needs to take place to put this on the ballot, what would be the latest date that you could put the over that you could come to us and we could still get it on the ballot and by that June. date? I have in talked June. with the city clerk about this. Um, I did I did uh, discuss this with the city clerk uh, because obviously she's the one and her staff who would have to carry out this special election. And um, uh, we discussed late May as a possibility, um, uh, uh, but uh, the thought of holding one election a month. No, no it's not the election. Days, you're 35 days. 35. 35 days. So I was asking, you're planning on coming to the next meeting. That is it's, correct. And there will, but, be plenty but you, of, there will be plenty of time. But if you didn't come to the next meeting, but came to the meeting after that or one other, there would still be time to put it on? Uh, barely, because okay. it's uh, a 35-day window. Uh, and so we would be needing to do it. The other factor is I, I also wanted to give the city clerk time to prepare to find uh, the, the, to, to do the work that she would need to do if the city council chooses to, to take this action. I was just that two of us will not be at the next meeting. Okay. Um, I know of two, and I just want okay. to make sure that. Um, well, certainly, uh, that certainly, you know, that's a decision the council can make. I mean, I can tell you that statutorily, there is time if it if it extended further. I mean, right now the the, the April 18th and then May 4th would be your next okay. meeting. Mm -hmm. I would have to get out a calendar and count it, but it's a 35 days uh, okay. requirement. But that's the statutory requirement. I was more concerned about the other okay. issues around the city clerk. And mayor it may still be fine to bring it next time. I was just raising that yes. to understand it. Yes. Um, Maureen. Any other questions, Councilor Tacy? <coughs> I know you really don't know just exactly how much the number would be. <coughs> mm -hmm. Well, uh, obviously, uh, and this was actually a question that someone asked me last night about an override uh, at the Florence Community Center that, you know, well, you know, what happens if you do an override for, you know, $1.4 million? And the question was, well, then we fill the gap for this year, but the next year, uh, you know, we've all seen the math. We've seen the way the you know, revenues versus expenditures, uh, that curve, uh, will be right back where we are in terms of, uh, of 
you know, in terms of the, that equation. So my plan is, and I've been working with the finance director on doing some financial modeling, uh, looking at um, growth in, in various budget areas and trying to project a, a reasonable growth pattern over the next three to five years and then trying to create a revenue scenario that we could uh, raise revenue to be able to sustain that over that period. Um, and that would include, and potentially, we've discussed even uh, uh, you know, creating sort of an override, uh, uh, sorry, I'm uh, capital, uh, sort of an override stabilization fund, if you will, uh, where we could actually show the taxpayers that where this money would be held as, as a way to then use it um, over time. <coughs> do, so, do you have a, in your head, do you have a formula for distribution? What, how much would go where, half to the school, half to the general fund? Uh, those are the kinds of things <coughs> I want to really work, I, I need to continue to work out and be clear about. Obviously, I mean, it's no, we, we all know that the schools represent, you know, 50 to 60 percent of our budget in terms of the uh, in terms of what we uh, spend and they have the largest number of employees so my you know I, I think that you can assume easily assume that that a percentage of that would go to the schools a, a yeah. large percentage of it would go to the schools yeah. but I also <laughs> am concerned about public safety and about uh, DPW and general government and uh, and so that's what we'll be trying to work on okay thank you yep council of Barge? yes um, Councilor Spector, I heard you say something about two of you would not be available in the next two weeks. So if we hold this back, who is to say who else is not going to be here That's the true. following two no, weeks? I was just raising that. It's fine. So I don't have a problem about it coming here in our next two weeks. I think the mayor needs to know where we're standing with it, and we need to move on. And again, I can Thank do the. I can. I can do some additional. Uh, I can have some additional discussions with the city clerk about the actual timing. And obviously, uh, you know, we have the option of a special meeting if if it were needed. We, that that's that's happened before. So, it's just raising that. If there was a if there was an issue about quorum or something like that. Or and just as a process question too, I'm assuming it's a two, two readings. It is a council order that would require two readings. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, obviously your rules. Uh, stipulate that and so I would leave that to the discretion of the council. Councilor Freeman Day. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I think it's important to come to the to the, the voters with this uh, proposal and I think uh, during budget hearings it will be very important to uh, to see the discrep the, the possible uh, filling that an override will uh, will accomplish or mm -hmm. may accomplish. Uh, mm -hmm. That's I expect it is going to be a rather um, morose budget season, uh, budget hearings rather, and I think it's important that the uh, the council and the public will be able to see uh, in in each budget presentation the uh, the possible uh, fixes that uh, that an override might uh, might uh, might um, apply. And 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 obviously, as we as we put together, I know the school department um, has already done this in terms of their budget process. Uh, uh, have been putting together kind of an outline of these are the areas that they will be cutting. These are the programs. These are the, the I mean, because they have to actually make very specific cuts. And in their case, many because many of them are personnel cuts, they have to do notifications to people, um, and of and it affects scheduling. So. We'll be presenting that as sort of a as part of our of the budget that I overall budget that I present, um, uh, sort of a list of the items, the services. And again, one of the things I've stressed at all of these budget meetings is, you know, the gap is not about we're not talking about adding new services or adding new people or adding new programs. The gap is between providing the same level of service from FY13 to FY14, um, and the fact that you know when you've got $3 million in expenditures to meet that level service and you're only looking at a million, you know, a million and a half of revenues, it's just that's, that's, where, the, uh, that's where the gap occurs. And, and again, I point out, as I pointed out at these other meetings, we made cuts in FY13. I mean, we made cuts and layoffs on the city side. There were cuts on the school side. 
Uh, so this has been, uh, this is, uh, you know, this is not something that has just occurred. I think we've reached a stage now where the gap has reached a point um, uh, where we're, I believe we're facing the level of cuts, particularly in the schools, that this merits uh, taking it to the voters and asking them uh, uh, to decide this. Because um, I don't want to make these cuts uh, uh, and, and without the, really without the community's input on it. Councilor Schwartz. <clears throat> I just wanted to say that, um, well, thank you for these budget forums and to let you know that um, I have gotten a lot of feedback from my constituents thanking you, I mean, through me, and just sort of talking about how useful they have been to really understand the state of our budget. And I just wanted to pass on those thanks and thank you directly. Thank you, and I, and I wanted to thank the counselors who've come to some of them, and I appreciate your presence there. And uh, uh, I know you've sat through this presentation many times, and the ending never changes. It's always the same unhappy ending, but, uh, but I do feel it's important. And, and I also have tried to point out at these hearings that you know we have been working very hard since the beginning of my administration to really work on efficiency, on we've merged departments, we've applied for grants uh, to do regionalization. I've put in place you know, spending restriction policies, comp time policies, cell phone policies, take home car policies. I've, I've been tried to be very responsible with uh, taxpayers' money. And so again, this is not a step that I relish or I take lightly or <coughs> that I'd see myself <coughs> Uh, doing about a year ago, but this is where we are, and I believe it's uh, it's the, it's my duty to bring this forward to you. Yeah, I want to um, <clears throat> remind everybody and, and the mayor also that <clears throat> during the last the two million dollar override that was passed in two thousand and ten, two thousand nine, nine, excuse me, <clears throat> the there was one particular resident on my ward that was against the two million dollars. He thought it should have been four million. He was pretty adamant about it at all the meetings, <clears throat> and um, I and I opposed the four million at the time because I didn't want to send that much money out there <clears throat> at once. Because who knows? It could have been a four million dollar override last time, and we could still be looking for another override this time. So that in mind, um, that's why I asked I how much. Yeah, <clears throat> and so I was not to go overboard, and and, and but. And my concern, if I give you a number tonight, he's going to put it on the front page of the paper tomorrow. So I want to make sure, and again, I, that house number is really important to me uh, because, because I've been, again, trying to be very careful about putting out the exact numbers around our revenue and our expenditures. And I do think waiting to see what that house budget number is an important part of understanding the full gap. Plus, we want to do some more modeling. Uh, financial modeling about how this would play out to answer your very concern that, I, that where this would leave us over the next two, three to five years. And I know that the announcement must have been leaked to the press. That's why Chad's here. He's writing frivolously. Oh. He's well, let, let the record show that the mayor would indicate Chad Kane, and I should also point out that Chad Kane is here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes it it's, uh, it's his beat. He yes, pulled the short is. straw. He's from the Daily Hampshire Gazette. <laughs> Um, any other questions or comments for the mayor? Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much, and obviously I'll be staying for the finance <coughs> committee portion as well uh, to talk about to some of the orders. 